going to do a workshop on AI art from idea to picture. Now, this is not only about how to generate images. Um, that will be the second half. The first half will be how to use large language models as an assistant for preparing your game. Because step one that you should be doing is some basic research. Now, more often than not, if you're using official adventures, you're already given some monsters, but occasionally you're not given monsters. And here is something that I came up with that really helps me to find interesting monsters. So I was making a water dungeon, water themed dungeon. And what I started doing is I went to Bing chat is what it's called. And you can simply, uh, oh yeah. Uh, there is a selection. I think I've already done this. Let's restart this. I want creative. So you want to be more creative as your selection because it gives you a much more verbose answer. And for creative tasks, that is what you want. If you're doing actual research, be more precise. And there is a reason why I'm using Bing over GPT. We'll get to that as soon as I type something in. So, um, and one of the cool things that you can do is. Um, you can ask for mythological creatures from various different sources. So I w I've done simply um, give me a list of water-based mythological creatures from Inuit, um, not culture, uh, mythology. So I ask questions like this because. I know nothing about the Inuits. So I will let Bing come up with something. And as you can see, it did actually find something. And not only did it find something, but it also gives me link to the Wikipedia entry. So if I'm interested in learning more about it, I can just click on it and read some more. Now, of course, this is just Wikipedia article, so maybe this is not fantastic, but it's still a pretty good resource to find creatures that not only you don't know, but also your players don't know. Because if you're now throwing a fire elemental at your, en at your enemy, no, at your players, they will know, oh, I have to cast water spells on it because, and I don't cast fire spells on it because it's gonna be immune to that. But they very likely have never heard of an Aklut, which is an orca-like composite animal that takes the form of a wolf when on land and sometimes depicted as a wolf orca hybrid. So that I find is a really good way. Um, the advantage of doing it in Bing is, again, you get your links. The alternative is you do it with ChatGPT. Now, ChatGPT will hallucinate. So for that same prompt, it invented something that sounded about right, which was a giant otter that eats children, which if I'm a researcher, that's bad because that creature doesn't exist. But if I'm creating something for a video game, that's actually not bad. Because you don't really care whether the creature actually exists or not. You only want cool enemies for your game. So this is step one. Now, what you should always take from here as well is a description. So we have that uh, Qualupilit, or whatever, however it's pronounced. And we see human-like creature, long hair, green skin, long fingernails that live in the sea. So you want to keep that in mind and maybe write it down. So I have actually written this also in my guide that I have provided. I've posted a link. Did I not post a link yet? One moment. Let me do that now again. I already done that. Um, and basically, yeah, your step one is doing this. Um, there is also huggingface.chat and LM Studio if you want to do it locally. Um, so if you're interested in all of that, you can find information there, maybe write me a PM. I don't want to explain all of this right now because I can explaining how to install that takes probably a day. So that's why I'm keeping it simple. Just say use Bing AI chat and there are some alternatives there as well. And then, yeah, I write down everything I want to generate. So I do my research like this and I come up with people, monsters, objects and locations. And you want to pre-sort everything that you want to generate first. So make sure you have your entire list there. One of the biggest problems with generating images is cohesion. So you want to make sure that all of your images look exactly the same. And you can only achieve that if you use the same prompt for all of them. If you wildly change your prompt from thing to thing, 
it will look like it's multiple different artists that are involved. So if you gather everything you want to generate first, and then you find a good prompt, and then you run all of your prompts together in one go, you get a much, much better result. So yeah, so I usually sort into people, monsters, objects, and locations. Uh, the reason why I'm picking those ones is you often have to change your prompt rather dramatically. So I found, for example, if in a prompt I quote an artist and I try to make a monster, then instead of monsters, I get humans. Because I'm using a human name in my prompt and then the AI says, oh, you want to generate a human. So that's why I keep people and monsters separate. I have some examples how I write this down. So I have from another game that I was doing, uh, Fire Mage, Thomas de Rinio, with Spanish. And that's good enough description for me where I can kind of get an image in my head as well. Um, and then this one was actually named an adventure and it was tall, gaunt, and scarf. So I'll try to get this right. And some other stuff. Uh, I mean, if it's just items, I will literally just write down what the item is. If the description is important, obviously I become more verbose, but I try to keep it short where possible. And then here are some location. Um, I know this was super quick because I, I literally just wanted to show you how to do this part. Um, I don't really use it for much more than doing creating monsters, quite honestly. I will occasionally say, hey, come up with some interesting character names and backstories, or I will ask it to generate items and their backstories. So I actually find backstory writing can be rather interesting if you just give it a little bit of food. So if you just write, say, write a backstory, it's not going to be a good backstory. But if you say, oh, it's a cursed item that belonged to the witch, and then give it a name of the witch, it can actually come up with rather creative backstories. And it will not be always the same backstory over and over, which you may have noticed if you use AI a lot, that you get very similar stories. Um, oh, there was actually a paper right now. Uh, I saw it today. Uh, apparently, the chat GPT knows 25 jokes. And it will just replace the subjects of these jokes. So literally every joke you could ask for falls into one of those 25. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I mean with it's very repetitive. Cool. Um, if there are no questions, I will go on to the actual interesting part, to the image generation part. Good. Then let's get to the interesting part. Uh, I've opened LM Studio, just so you have seen it. Um, you can go to the chat, load it in, and then again, type it. Oh, um, if the AI ever ends like this, so it just stops typing in the middle of a word, you can usually just write continue, and it will continue from where it left off. Um, there is only a certain length that can generate can be generated at a time. So if you write continue, it will continue from where it started. It also goes for Bing chat. Good. So, Art Room. Now, Art Room exists in two versions. There is an online web client that costs money, and then there is this offline version that is free. Now, for the offline version, you want a somewhat modern PC. It doesn't need to be super duper modern, but you do need what what is like the weakest card we have is an Nvidia 670. So that I don't know what this equates to in AMD because AMD is slowly getting more and more optimized, but it's still not perfect. But if you have a reasonably modernish computer, you can probably do this. Otherwise, there are online services available. Uh, if you don't want to use Artroom, there is also Midjourney. But some of the things I'm going to do, you cannot do in Midjourney. So there are actually advantages of using Artroom over Midjourney. Good. So when you're first presented with this, um, you will need to download a model. Now, in my text document, I have some recommended models that I use quite frequently. The model we are going to use today is the art one here. It's listed on the art. It's called A2 Sovia. Some of you might know her even because she does uh, battle maps for D&D. Um, and she made her own AI model, which is actually one of the best ones, in my opinion. And then the other model we are going to use today is Game Icons, which is really good at making items. 
Um, the LoRa's we'll also get to later. Um, I would recommend to look through these then once we are done with whatever we're doing here. So we load our model. We want our width and height to be either 512 by 512 or 768 by 768. I would start with this size. I know it sounds very small, but to get a feeling on how to get good prompts and how everything works, start small. Once you know what you're doing, you can make larger images. The larger your image is, the exponentially longer it takes to make. So an image that is twice in size does not take twice as long. It actually takes considerably longer. So I would always recommend start with smaller images. Don't go smaller than 512 by 512 because that's kind of our range. Like um, anything below 512 by 512 is not what the model was trained on. But um, anything between 512 by 512 and 768 by 768 is fine for the beginning. Have your model selected. And then for the advanced settings, um, I have a tutorial linked in my document where you can just take uh, the settings that I'm using out. Um, technically speaking, you can go with a fairly low number of steps, which makes generation faster. Uh, if you go a bit higher, then you get better quality out, but there is diminishing returns. So you don't really see much of a difference beyond going like 50. I think you still see a difference, but 50 to 100 is going to be a challenge. Uh, prompt strength. I was re always changing it quite a lot. Lately, I've kind of stopped. I just left it at seven and just accepted that this is a good enough number. And honestly, I haven't really noticed that much of a difference. I will still occasionally do it if I see some weirdness. Um, and samplers, I would just say use either DPN 2 mcaras or Yule Ancestro. Um, there are various explanations why I'm picking what I'm picking, but for now, this is good enough. Um, this model already includes a VAE. Uh, VAE is something that gets put on top of the model to make the resulting images look nicer. So you don't need your own VAE. So that's also why I'm recommending this model. So you don't have to bother with what a VAE is. You can just use it out of the box. Cool. We have our settings for now done. And now we need our prompt. Now, what is a prompt? Or how, how does a prompt work? Your prompt tells the AI what you want. And the AI is really, really stupid. It takes things very, very literally. So sometimes, um, what did I have? Oh, yeah, uh, I've, I've written down wearing a plate because I was thinking, oh, yeah, plate armor makes sense. And it was actually then holding a ceramic plate in the hand like a waiter. Because they, I just interpret whatever you give it, and it will do whatever it wants. Now, there's a prompt structure which can help to avoid some issues. And of course, also the way you phrase can help. Now, from my experience, being less verbose is better. So I try to be on point, shorter tags, and so on, rather than, um, I think Mitchardy really likes that, where you do like, Imagine a warrior standing in the glowing sunlight while two other dragons find in the background. Yeah, don't describe the scene. It, AI doesn't really work that way. It will get confused with all of the filler words. Be on point. So um, what I want to do today is also the example prompt that I have in here is an alien priestess summoning her god. Now I will just run the prompt itself to see what kind of images we get. Word of warning. While this model shouldn't generate not safe for work images, I never know what happens. There might be a not safe for work image in here by accident. If that happens, I apologize. I mean, generally it shouldn't happen. I, I feel fairly confident it doesn't happen, but just in case it does happen, now you've been warned. So you put in our prompt and press run. And we'll get a result that is maybe good, maybe bad. It always depends on what you're looking for. Um, what you have to realize is this is a numbers game. So you want to generate a lot of numbers and then compare all of the numbers that you generated and think, is this what I want or not? Is this going in the right direction? So for example, I might say, ah, I don't know. I don't like this format. 
So let's give it a medium. So instead of just, you know, putting down the prompt, I will say it's fantasy art of an alien priestess summoning her god. So I will run it again. I have slightly modified it. So we'll see what we'll get. So with fantasy art, you usually expect something a bit more zoomed out. So while the first three images were just the top half of the body, we are now getting slightly more of the body. And as I will progress and change this more and more, we'll actually see that it zooms further and further out, which may, might be my goal. If your goal is getting something really up close, you would do portray. So instead of fantasy art, I'll do portray this time. And if I do that, we'll see it's basically just head and shoulders. At least this is what I assume. We're doing the luck of the draw, so it might be something entirely different. Yeah. So we are getting mm, the top half of the body, I guess. Also interesting candle fingers there. <laughs> now I'll just keep this portrait of an alien priestess in there. Now the problem is um, the god has certain properties. So what I've come up with, I want it to be an evil god. So what I've generated so far looks a little bit too bright, too nice. So we want to give it a little bit more weight. So I'm actually going to add a location to it. And not only that, so praying at an evil altar to give it already a little bit of oomph. I will also add certain attributes to it. So I'm going to say it should be dark, fog, moody, to just add this additional weight to it. I, I really want to make sure, oh, the player realizes when they see this image, this is actually an evil guy. This is not someone I want to get along. This is someone who is really going to screw us over if they succeed. Now you can see just by adding this dark and moody, I changed the image dramatically. You might also see the faces have gotten worse. This is normal. The smaller your people get, the worse the faces get. So it's always a trade-off between being zoomed in and getting good faces or being zoomed out and getting bad faces. However, there is a way to fix this. We'll get to it once we are done generating an image that kind of looks like what we want. So I feel like this dark we've now achieved, I still haven't found the right evil altar here. So I will probably run a couple more until I find the best one. But for now, maybe adding an artist could be a good thing. There is one person who is really well known, and that is Greg Rutowski. He's probably the most used one when it comes to AI art, because the way your AI art is influenced by adding in the style of Greg Rutowski is rather striking. So a lot of people really like it. Yeah, if you look now, the, the architecture has totally changed. And there is a certain mood to the picture, suddenly. It is up to you whether you find it ethical or not to use an art style of a different author, um, different artist. For me personally, I say if the artist is dead, I have no problems whatsoever. And if the artist is still alive, I try not to use it commercially. So this is how I see it. You can handle this however you would like. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Now, I feel like we've already gotten something pretty good here. Um, again, the face, don't worry too much about it. We can fix that. But other than that, we are getting some really moody pictures in like this weird art style. Obviously, if you say, oh, I don't want it to be outside, I want it to be in a cathedral, you can do in a cathedral. And you might see that I'm splitting all of this up with commas. These commas are actually read by the AI, and they know then that it is a new token. So things that are written together will be considered together. And things that are written earlier are considered more important than things that are written later. So this is definitely something to take into consideration. This is also a very common feature where you get two faces for whatever reason. I don't know why, but this is just something that commonly happens. And also that if you add something like inside a place, that instead of being inside a place, you are in front of the place. So this is just something where you need to generate a lot and eventually you'll get what you want. So for example, this here is actually brilliant from what I'm trying to do. Finally, we can add additional attributes, which are just some um, um, I would I don't know what you would call them, uh, fancy fires. So I'll add global illumination, intricate. Uh, these don't really have any particular meaning, um, but 
if you add them, they make the image ever so slightly better. So why not make use of them? So I'm going to generate again. And maybe you can see that the detail on the walls has increased now by quite a bit. Even though the faces on the large statues have gone worse. <laughs> but yeah, so I feel like I can now generate images that kind of look like what I want. Again, we'll have to fix the face, which is the next thing that we'll do. However, there are two or three more things that are really cool that I want to show next. So we have the starting image. But we are saying, ah, we don't like the color. We actually want it to be an alien priestess praying to Barbie for whatever reason. So what we can do is we can use this as our starting image and go to control net and choose a control net. Now these control nets take your image and turn it into a processed image. So if you look at this, you can see that it's kind of like the image that we have here but it removes a lot of detail in between. And when I now run this, it will use this as its starting idea. So it will respect where the lines are and will try, try to roughly follow this example. So I just press run now with the same prompt. So you can see that we'll get very similar images, but they are definitely changed. I've also increased my strength to one because if you have lower strength, then it will keep part of the original image in place. So yeah, we're getting just variations of that same theme. Now let's take out dark, fog, and moody, and we put in rainbows, pink, and colorful instead. And we'll run it again. And oh my god, uh, now we get some weird slanish sect, apparently. <laughs> but yeah, you can you can see how it brightens it up. I actually think the Greg Rutowski is working against us here because he usually makes dark images. So let's throw that out and see if that gives us even more rainbows, pink and colorful oh. stuff. No, okay. Well, it, it definitely brightened up the image. Basically, what I want to say is, if you have something that has the right shape, but it's not the right color, this is a way where you can still salvage it. Um, this is also a really cool way if you have a human with the right expression. So let's say um, we use her. Sure, why not? And uh, turn her into an orc. So I will say portray of an orc in front of a fire and then we run it now it will take this image and i will try to figure out okay how does an orc look and i will try to match the characteristic of an orc on this woman so this is actually a really really powerful tool to make monsters now there is still some ai stuff or some some gim stuff i guess where you need to change the color of the hands but you see how the face was very easily changed to an orc. So this is really powerful stuff. I would highly recommend using control nets um, if you're making any kind of weird creatures, because it's way more, way easier to generate good humans and then turn them into monsters than generate good monsters. I will stick with this image and show another thing that you can do, and that is background removal. Now, generally speaking, you probably want standard or human, which removes, oh, let's set this to the starting image. Uh, standard keeps the clothing intact, I think, and maybe some items that they're holding, while human only gives you the person and face only gives you the face. So if you now press preview, instead of getting everything, you only get the person and the fire. And you can save this and then later use it as a PNG in your PDF that you're making for your players. Or to make a token would also be a use case for this. So background removal is actually really, really useful if you're just very quickly, you know, I just want the character. 
And you can also do remove background in Gen. And what that does is that, let's run it and see if it works. Arthur, I hope you fix this. Um, what that should do is that it keeps the person intact and only changes the background. No, it's not fixed yet. Or it's because I have control net enabled. Might be possible that you can have both at the same time. Let's try without control net. Yeah. Yeah, it's not uh, fixed yet. So remove background and Chen should remove the background and just leave the outside here. But what you can do now is, of course, you can save it, use this then as your starting image, and then generate, and you would get um, the background changed. So I had it where I had a really good wizard, but uh, a chemical lab in the background was garbage. And I basically removed the background and made new backgrounds for him uh, for a new alchemical lab where he's standing in. So that's a very nice use case for that. Cool. Um, then one final thing, which is really neat. There are LoRa's. Now what these LoRa's do, they introduce a new concept to a model and also kind of force that model to use that concept. So what I have here, for example, is Alchemy Punk. Let's use this one. So I'm going to keep this orc here. So we have a bunch of orcs generated. And almost every LoRa has a trigger word. So when you download these LoRa's, check what the trigger word is, write it down, and then you can use it. Or if it's like this one, it's just the name of the LoRa, which makes it, of course, a lot easier. So I will add this to my prompt, press run. Now the Alchemy Punk, if I remember correctly, is just a whole lot of potions everywhere. Which hopefully we are getting now. Yeah, so now we have a Orcish potion seller. Laura is trained on multiple things. It learns a character, or it can learn a character, it can learn a style, it can learn a concept. So if we do, instead of that alchemy one, I do biofill tech, sure, whatever that is. Um, biofill, I think, was like plants growing everywhere and biomechanical uh, creatures. Let's see. Okay, yeah, it's mostly just plants in the background. Um, this works way better if you do machines. Um, maybe if I do, for example, solar panels. I mean, it can also be good for a druid if you want leaves growing on them and like wood decoration. But if I do solar panels, you will see what it was made for. So this is meant for technology. And then you use the biofill punk together with it. And you get these very interestingly grown structures, like greenhouses almost. Good. Uh, let me think. Uh, before we get to in painting, I want to show how to make game icons or magical items rather. So for magical items, there's a special model which you need to use, which uh, I mean, you don't have to use, but with that one, I have gotten really good results. And that is Game Icon Institute. It is linked in my sheet. So you can just get it from there. And then this one you don't use alone, but you also have Loras. So we'll go all the way down to Game Icon and I will do food. Sure, why not? And the trigger word for that one is Game Icon. And then I need a random food. So Larun, you suggest me a food. Please don't make it too complicated. I don't know how versatile it is. <laughs> Bunch of apples. Okay. Yeah, I will do uh, magical blue apples. Takes a second to load in a new model. So whenever you change a model, it's actually taking quite a long while to load it in. Um, of course, if you just reuse the same model over and over, then it's not that much of a problem. This is not blue apples. Dear God, this is awful. <laughs> I might need to actually 
that I haven't used the food one and it shows. What is going on here? This is this is awful. I'm going to make the executive decision that we're not making food because apparently this one isn't working well. And I don't know. Uh, I have used the books one before. So let's make a book instead. Uh, sorcery book. Flames. So I'm going to try again. Maybe I just got really unlucky there. I don't know. Um, but it should look kind of like hopefully this. <laughs> let's see. Um, just for your information, there is this weight here. Um, sometimes Lauras are too strong and you need to reduce the amount that you have a little bit. Yeah, this is much better. This is what I was expecting. Um, even though here I would almost say that Laura is a little bit too strong. So if you see how it looks a little bit washed out at the moment, that's usually a sign that it's a bit too strong. So I'll go down to 0.7% or strength rather. So 70% strength. And I just run it again. I mean, I think this model is fairly cartoony, but what we could try is that I go back to the A2 Sovia model. Because, I mean, I can give you something like this, but, but I don't think that is quite what you're looking for. Why, why is the two books stacked on top? Of each other. <laughs> it's getting more and more. Dear God. It's probably my intricate. So I now changed my model. Uh, I said that you should be using it with game icon. Um, it actually works with other models as well, but I've often gotten it that then other people are holding it. But sometimes you get shit like this, which is really beautiful. And that that is probably probably closer to what you were looking for. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, spirits and uh, dynamic lighting. And then what is another good one that we could add? Uh, that won't be working because that's not a, a term that it understands. But bioluminescence, it does understand. But that's not how you write this. Luminescence. There we go. <laughs> Spelling does absolutely matter. 100%. Yeah, there you go. That's much better. Yeah. And I mean, I have book here, but as you can see, there's actually quite a extensive list. Bottles, books, bags, batches, chests, fans, gems, gloves, swords. Oh God, we're doing a sword. I don't care. We are doing it. I keep the same things. I just change it to swords are done with skulls and everything. Let's see. Let's see if we get a sword. I don't think so. No, it's going to be a skimmy tar. No, it's not even going to be a sword. Wow. Swords are impossible. I have no clue why, but AI does not want to generate swords. No, game icon is the trigger word for the Laura. So without that, uh, the Laura doesn't trigger. So that that's definitely one that we require. I mean, yeah, do, do this one moment, sword, and then we go back to the one we just had, and then we run. Maybe this will work. But yeah, you can combine to Laura. So if you say there is a certain style that you really like, um, I don't know, you are making cyberpunk stuff. You could consider adding a cyberpunk style on top of your um, game icon style that you're having. And let's see. Uh, I mean, it kind of looks like a sword. This is still not good. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can give this a try in a second. Um, I'll also add soul card because this is another cool one, um, but I will only do it at like 0 0.7. Um, if you do more than one Laura at a time, you want to make sure to increase your steps a little bit. That's something I've noticed. More steps seems to help. So I'm going to increase my number of steps. I have decreased the width and increased the height. So I hope now we're getting more swords because it's no longer square, but it's actually now a longish 
thing. Uh, we are loading in those soul cards. It might look horrible because the soul cards are a very distinctive style, but I hope it doesn't conflict too much with each other. Now nah, that's worked. It's a bit, little better, but it's still not long. It just does not want to do long. I don't know why. Swords and lizard snakes, stuff like this. Okay, um, maybe one final thing. Uh, you can use an image as your starting image as well without any of the fancy things that I've shown. And that strength determines how much it gets changed. So if I do 0 0.2, then it will only get changed a little bit. Um, if, for example, the hand is just a little bit broken, this can actually fix it really well. Uh, I should also do or in front of a fire. Otherwise, we're going to get a sword somewhere in this image. I think it's 0 0.2 strength. It shouldn't make a difference because it's such a low difference. Oh, shit. We are... <laughs> <laughs> We've increased that. Yeah, you have to remember to change the resolution back. I mean, this can actually be helpful. So I have created dwarfs like this, where I've generated a human in 520, uh, 512 by 768. And then I said, make my next generation 768 by 768. And because it gets stretched broader, you actually get something that kind of looks like a dwarf. Yeah. So I can actually say this is not a terrible idea. So we're going to try again at 0 0.2, then at 0 0.5, and then I'll do it 0 0.85 or something. Um, and here at 0 0.2, you see there is barely any change. This is pretty much the same image we just had. Like, details are changed, but we don't get a massive change. Now we're doing the same thing at 0 0.5 next, where quite a substantial amount of the image should be changed, potentially. Still getting used to the new comp UI. Yeah, now we're actually getting men. So it changed the gender. And you'll also see the difference from image to the next image is much larger. And then the final set is at 0 0.85, which is already crazy high, where there should be barely anything left. It often somehow takes the colors more than it does take the shape of the previous image. So you can see it still has that red and maybe the white from the hairs and so on. So it still takes a little bit. But and the fire, I think, also always stays in the same position, potentially. So yeah, quite a lot you can do. Now, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use this image. Um, yes, we are heading to our in painting tab. Now, in painting. We just click on the image we want. This was the wrong one. I wanted this one. And you have a couple of tools up here. This is what you want to use. Now, with the Move tool, you can move the square around. This square is your bounding box. The AI can only see what is inside your bounding box. So let's say you wanted an orc in front of the fire, and you put your bounding box down here. And I'll also make it smaller. If you're not generating something here, they, I will not find an orc and will try to make an orc somewhere. So if you're generating using in painting, make sure that at least part of the face is still included. Otherwise, you're not going to get a good um, generation. Now, what I want to do here is I want to turn this into a frog person. Up here, make sure that you turn mask mode off if it's on. Go to the eraser tool and erase the face. It's almost always easier to erase and regenerate from zero than to fix something that is already there. This can work with hands, but from my experience, just generate over and over and over, and eventually you'll get something good. Now we'll go into mask mode and brush, and we'll brush over the section that we just deleted. Now it will automatically take anything that is empty, but it's good to have a little bit of the edge there. You want to avoid taking anything that is too far up. So, uh, like, don't go outside. It shouldn't make a huge difference, but it, from my experience, sometimes it does. So, if you want to be safe, just do it like this. Now, I'll keep uh, in front of a fire, but I'll call it a frog in front of a fire or a frog humanoid in front of a fire. Um, 
very important, you need to play around a lot with the variation strength. Now I'm going to be lucky with 0.6. I just know it. So I'll set it to 0.6 and I'll press run. That's still going to use all the other settings that you have here. So you can combine this with a LoRa. You can combine this with control net. You can change the number of steps with CFG. So feel free to play around. Now let's see what we got. We got <laughs> a tiny little fraud. So 0 0.6 was not good. So um, yeah, let's reduce this. Let's do 0 0.4 instead. Just try again. You have to also take into consideration, it doesn't only look at this for a reference. It also, of course, looks at this for reference. And all of this is black. So it might consider, oh, there's a lot of black background and not consider the rest of the human. OK, I see this is not quite working because it really doesn't want to put it here. So if I remove the mask for a second, you can see this is pretty poor. I mean, those were pretty all right, but it's not quite what I want. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the brush tool. Go to green, take a darkish green, and we'll just paint a very crude face here. We're going to change to yellow and make the size a bit smaller and just give it a bit of highlight down here. And I want, I don't know, turquoise eyes, sure. Uh, give it two eyes. I know, very professional drawing. Now, I'm really bugged that this here doesn't go away. Go away. <laughs> and let's press run again. Now it takes what it has here as a reference. And, oh, sorry, never mind this. Clicked wrong. Yeah, now, of course, since I'm giving it something to reference from, I need to increase my strength again. So 0 0.4 is clearly not enough. So let's go up to 0 0.75. Strength is just something you need to play around with a lot. Um, if you're getting these double faces, you're too high. So 0 0.75 is too high. Let's go back down to 0 0.6 Try again. Hopefully this time I get something good. You'll also see the higher I go, the more the color changes. So I had this fairly dark green and I went fairly high and it became brighter and brighter. Ugh, this is awful. Yeah, I'm still getting used to the new uh, variation strength. I mean, this is getting closer to what I want, but apparently it really doesn't want to take the face. I can actually show you um, something I generally. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe not with a black background. I think this is actually what is screwing me over. So the, the AI is fairly sensitive to black. It really does not like black for whatever reason. But I'm going to show you as soon as my browser loads. I have too many images. I have around 30,000 images generated. So having them sorted by date, which is my preferred time way, not by name, it takes a bit. I mean, if you come to this point, I usually say, OK, maybe my starting image wasn't perfect. And I might actually go back and try a different starting image. So just to prove that it actually works, I'm actually going to take this one here, um, very quickly generate a new version of it, because I just um, want it right at the top of my list. Makes my life easier. And I will try again. So in case you joined and hope that it's just you click and you get a good result, this is not how AI works. It's always a little bit of work that you have to put inside. But you get a feeling for it. And I will show you after we are done here some resources that me and Sticks have created, another uh, guy from the Art Room Discord, um, where we've tried various different prompts. And that can give you some ideas what does work and what doesn't work. Um, yes, it should be. Uh, let's see. Here are my orcs. So my frogs should be also somewhere around here. No. 
Now, apparently I only have my orcs from earlier. Very well then. Okay, we are taking this image. Let's try again. Sure, this will work. So, scrapping this, scrapping this idea, we're gonna fi fix this here. Now, the face might be a little bit small. We'll have to see. Again, I'm gonna erase it. This time, I'm going to keep the hairs intact because I actually think the black background is what screwed us. Turn on my mask. Increase the size a bit. Just mark this here. And I will just call it a frog humanoid this time. Not in front of a fire. Put my strength to somewhere in the middle. Press run. And then hopefully this time we are a little bit more lucky than earlier. No. <laughs> my god, what is going on? Earlier worked on the first try. <laughs> really doesn't want to do a frog. OK, maybe I need to just try frog. Or maybe a frog face could also work. Let's try both. Nope. Does everything except the frog. I'm really disturbed this time. I mean, this kind of works, but it's not quite fitting the hair. Always. Yeah, I mean, this year, this year does work. Yeah. So, as you have seen, maybe, luck of the draw. So, do not get discouraged if you generate like, five, ten images, just generate a couple and eventually you'll get one that is pretty good. I mean, this is still not perfect. I don't like the neck here, but at least we have now a proper face. And you can, of course, now save this. Uh, where's the save button? There's the save button. So always remember to save. That saves not only what is inside the box, but also what is outside of the box. Then we can go back to here and we can select that image that we've just generated. And maybe do a, I don't know, 0 0.2. And then we do a frog human wizard as our prompt. Just so it knows roughly what it's supposed to generate. And then, of course, you get variations of it. Now I know why we are still on the Game Icon Institute model. That one is not good for anything other than game icons. So the reason why it didn't work was because I had the wrong model selected. Let's see if I can actually prove this. OK, let, let's go back here. Let's get rid of whatever this is. Let's select her, put this in the center. I hope this works now, because otherwise I'm going to be really embarrassed. Um, mask mode off, face on, gone, mask mode on, brush tool, paint on the face. Rock human wizard can stay. Please work. <laughs> Oh, image variation strength a bit too low, maybe. Let's go up. No, not that one. Um, let's see. Please work. <laughs> yeah, don't ignore those because they're still at too low of a strength. It needs to be around 0 0.5. And I think it just generated something similar to what we just had. Ah, I'm in the wrong line, that's why. OK, interesting. Interesting, interesting. I'm getting human, so I need to remove human. Let's see. Come on. Don't let me down, Sovia. <laughs> okay. Just a closed face. I mean, this kind of looks like a frog, so we're getting in the right direction. Still not super happy, though. I think it takes that wizard term too strongly. So the training set that these models were trained on, certain terms were used a lot and certain terms were used very infrequently. So one that I've noticed, for example, is horse. If you have horse in there, you're going to get vanilla horses. So forget about making centaurs and using the term horse in your term. Because as soon as horse is in the term, it's just going to give you a horse, period. It can never mix a horse and something else from my experience. Let's see. Yeah, it just doesn't want to make mega frog. OK, I give up. I call this uh, because I'm pre presenting it. Uh, I'm blaming that. Uh, but I promise earlier when I did it, it worked. 
Um, I've just cleared out my chance because I didn't want to keep the ones where I was testing earlier. Um, again, I think it might be the surroundings. Um, so certain colors just really do not like being used. So if you have a green frog and having a blue or white background, I think this could be the reason why. Don't want to say 100%, but definitely something I'm considering. Now, hmm? yeah, let's see. I have my fantasy art. Yeah, where was the frog here? Of course, of course, yeah. There we go. This is what I generated earlier. See? That's why I'm saying I know that this works. I tried it earlier. I don't know why it's not working now. And I mean, this is like three generations, so all three of them are really good. Potentially, to a certain extent. It depends on how far we are going away. So if you're going really far away from, like, human, then it's a little bit of a challenge. But we can definitely give it a try. Hit me. No requests. Everyone is silent. No one wants to speak. They're all scared of me. And Do then we'll just the portrait of a dragon's head with like an hourglass in the moor. Okay. So that there, there you actually, there you actually found something that will be challenging, because I hope so. so. <laughs> a, a, AI does one thing really well, and that is make characters. What AI does not do really well is making character that reacts with other things. So a character holding something or a character having something in their mouth is actually really challenging. But what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to do a uh, fire dragon with an open mouth. I'm going to show you how I would approach this because it's actually a good one. Um, I'm going to just have my regular additions to it and we'll press run. And I hope I get at least one that looks pretty cool. Maybe I should have typed Red Dragon instead of Fire Dragon. Nah, I think that's a pretty good one. <laughs> that's amazing. What's going on here? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's that's like Metroid Primey kind of. Uh, I'm kind of tempted. One moment we're doing a bit more here. I want to give you some other cool stuff. Uh, we're doing apocalyptic cyberpunk. Take uh, cyberpunk. I think it's like this. We'll see. And we'll just take the best out of those three. Okay, never mind. We're sticking with those uh, dragons. I guess this just overrides the style completely. So um, out of those three, I think this one was the best one. So I will open this up in GIMP, which will hopefully uh, appear on the right screen. It's interesting. So when you train a Laura, it can tr also learn the person that is in there. And I think this is what happened here. So even though this is supposed to be apocalyptic cyberpunk, it gives you a woman because it was probably trained on a lot of images of women. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to just copy from the internet an hourglass. Um, layer, scale layer, and I think this should be around 250 or so. Yeah, it's a bit large. Uh, let's do 150 then, maybe, or maybe 125. Okay, and then we'll rotate this whole thing. Image, rotate, rotate, rotate. No, layer, rotate, transform, arbitrary rotation, and 
Kind of like this, I guess. Looks about right. Now, I don't like the white part down here, so I'm going to cut this out next. And feel free to call this cheating, by the way. That's fine by me. I have no problem with uh, you calling me out. Can I not select by color here? No, I'm still. Uh, do I need to? Ah, I haven't done two new layer yet. That's why. So I want to uh, see what happens here. So we need the fussy select. And I have this white bar down here. Let's get rid of it completely, please. Good. And then we'll save this. And we'll use this as our starting image. Use a strength of, I don't know, 2.5. Press Run. And I should probably add uh, an hour glass in its open mouth. So I'll add that in. Yeah, this is not good enough yet. Might also be a bit too large. But this is kind of my approach. So I actually Photoshop it in. And then I run the AI again on the image that I've made. And that's usually good enough to get a result that is pretty pleasing. So do I have this here? Uh, video game, alpha sprites. Uh, I think I have my template here somewhere as well. Yeah, I can shoot it in a second. Yeah, I mean, this is not fantastic. I should have probably deleted off parts that are inside the mouth. Advantage. So actually, let me quickly do this. Why not? Um, so this part up here. Oh, one second. Uh, this part up here shouldn't be visible. And this part back here, because it's inside the mouth, shouldn't be visible. And this part shouldn't be visible. So only this part should be visible, maybe. And we'll go a bit further to the right. Let's overwrite this whole thing. See if this this helps, because we are currently hiding the face. And as I said earlier, hiding faces, the AI doesn't like at all. AI absolutely hates if the face isn't visible of whatever your main prompt is. Let's go. Yeah. It's not good enough. Not good enough for me. <laughs> so I would probably not mess around a lot with the strength, maybe even adjust it again in GIMP until I have something where I would say, yeah, I'm satisfied with this. This is good enough. I can work with this. I might. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could technically in paint. Uh, we could try that too. Why not? Um, we'll just have to use a different image because uh, I like to live dangerously and I already overwrote that image that we had here. So when I click on this, I don't think, yeah, it loads it with, with the in-painting. So we'll just use this one. And go here. Then we use the eraser tool. And erase maybe this part. Then we enable our mask again. And we can keep the rest the same because the rest of the prompt still should be fine. I'm also going to delete this image out just in case. And if we not generate here. OK, so if you're getting just as much, that means your strength isn't high enough yet. So we need to increase our strength. So let's go higher. The lower the strength, the more it infers from what is surrounding. And the higher the strength, the more it just makes up things out of nothing. Uh, that's not what I clicked on, I thought. But I clicked on this. <laughs> now we're getting short mouth. Oh, no. Yeah, it really doesn't want to do this. Uh, maybe if I go here and here. I don't know. Uh, Sorry, I need to turn off the mask. Oh, 
This looks like an hourglass, right? Kind of. Okay, my mask disappeared, and let me draw it again, I guess. Let's go. Interesting. I think it doesn't know what an hourglass is. Is that, the, is that a possibility? Because it sure looks like it doesn't understand what I want. Because by now it should definitely have at least something that vaguely looks like it. It doesn't necessarily need to be in the right shape. But yeah, let's go even higher. I mean, this is kind of interesting, what it's holding now. But it didn't finish up the mouth again, which kind of bothers me. Doesn't want to connect it. So maybe I need to be even more careful with deleting out. So I shouldn't have deleted as much. Could be the, the reason why. Let's go crazy high just to see what it does. And then I would say, yeah. It's, it's easy to get a pretty picture with an AI. It's hard to get whatever pretty picture you want with the AI. So this just requires practice. To be fair, it was an intentionally hard choice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, so as I said, I would probably now go back to GIMP, uh, maybe add in a different hourglass. I would also actually, uh, another thing that I would do is I would go back here and would do just do a portrait of an hourglass. Oh, and maybe not in its open mouth. Just to see whether it even knows what an hourglass is. Because if it doesn't, then what you're doing here is completely futile. Okay, it does know what an hourglass is. Kinda. I mean, this is not what I would have expected, but hey. It at least somewhat looks like an hourglass. But yeah, you see what kind of weird shapes it makes. So I think actually giving it a normal hourglass might be what confuses the hell out of it. I think there we found our culprit, why it's not working. I mean, this looks like a normal hourglass, mostly. Yeah. And of course, I could then use this hourglass and put it in, because this is what the AI knows. So maybe that's better than some random PNG of the internet. Now, I'm not sure whether my background removal will work on this because it's more made for humans. So I might say I didn't find anything. Uh, nope, couldn't find anything. So I can't extract the background here because there are no faces there. Yeah. You should be able to. Hmm? You know, it's, not, it's not your starting image. I think that's why it's not working. Uh, okay. That's a good point. <laughs> Ah, okay, but it removed too much. <laughs> I mean, we could try this one. Let's see. That's actually a good point. Yeah, let's let's do this then. Let's go back to this one. Do a preview. Save this. Let's get rid of this one. Okay, maybe we can do this. Let's go. Let's go. I was already uh, all downtrodden now. <laughs> Lose, losing my fate. Yeah. Uh, layer and transform and arbitrary rotation. I should probably have resized it first, but whatever. Rotate and layer. Scale layer 125, I think we found earlier was good. Yeah. See. I, I knew that it would be 250. I, I did it correct earlier. Oh, no. No, no. But now it's not doing it right. Because I've made it so small, it's upscaling it, and it gives me a lot of artifacts. So uh, it will be 350. Now we just need to rotate it a bit more. I don't know, like this maybe?
بس اوكي لا شو I don't think it cares about perspective all that much. Sadly. <laughs> okay, let's go down with our strength again to 0 0.2. And then uh, we need to do of a dragon with an hourglass in its mouth. And if this doesn't work, we'll quickly go to in painting and try it there again, because this is actually also pretty good like prerequisite for in painting, I think. Yeah, it, it needs to close its mouth. I think that is missing here. As long as that's not happening, it's not going to good, look good. So we'll go to in painting and try there one more time. Final, final try. So I'm going to get rid of all of this. Then I'm going to load this in. I'm going to move this over. And I'm just going to only mark this part here and then give this a high hmm? yeah but it takes the entire bounding box in reference so while it only changes what is masked it takes the entire uh, bounding box in reference there is also another thing that i could do which might help and that is upscaling the image so if you make your image larger, then that sometimes makes it easier to fix what you're doing. And I think I got really weird results here. Yeah, it just says, nope, no more hour class for you. Nah. So if you, if you see this actually, where it completely changes what you had, your image variation strength is too high. So again, this is just something you need to play around with a lot. In painting is sadly not easy. And I think it got rid of my mask. Aren't I have a bug to report? It deletes the mask when you turn it off. Sometimes. <laughs> hmm. So let's see. Yeah, it's still generating without, so we need to go even lower. Eventually, I'll find the sweet spot. And I mean, if it doesn't work now, I would just say, apparently too difficult. <laughs> so that's that's sadly something that's sadly something you'll have to live with. So if you generate AI images, sometimes you won't be able to do this. Now, there's one thing I will do because I'm curious. There is now a new model. Uh, it's called SDXL, which was released three days ago. And maybe a bit more a couple days ago um and that one is a lot better at following prompts but yeah as you can see still not generating the hourglass just removes it completely from the picture so it doesn't like that hourglass there just says no i don't want an hourglass and what we'll do is we'll actually select this new model and try to generate it in there because as i said uh, this has a new way of reading your prompts so potentially it will actually give us a better result. Now, this one is meant to be used for 1024 by 1024. When I've ran some tests earlier, this one actually performed worse than A2 Sovia. However, A2 Sovia is a pretty good model when it comes to fantasy art. So I would have been really surprised if the blank model that just came out would be better than one that was specifically made just for generating fantasy art. Like that is obviously it's gonna be worse. But I did get some nice portraits. So let's see what it does, what it what it makes out of this prompt. Um maybe while we're waiting, uh the negative prompt can be really useful. So if it gives you a color that you don't like, you can type in down here you want a different color, and then it will change or you can write in which colors you don't want and it will change it. So this can be useful if you make draw or um mind flayer where i think it always does them purple every single time they are purple but if you type in purple as a negative prompt 
you'll get white and blue and different colors. So that can be really useful. And as you can see, this gives you really pretty pictures, but it's still not in his mouth. <laughs> it just does not want to go into the mouth. So there you go. You win, Evolution. Congrats. <laughs> I mean, who wants a hourglass in your mouth, especially if you're a dragon? Like you bite down once and you'll have sand all over your mouth. It's going to yeah. be annoying. But as you can see, like if you look at the detail on the dragon compared to the detail we had on these dragons, that is quite a difference. So this new SDXL model is going to be great. But if I put in the prompt from earlier, I'm, I'm really looking forward to because um, I don't No, I have the standard 1.5. We are also taking the standard 1.5. So that uh, model from Sovia is based on that 1.5 model. And I'm going to show you how shitty, and I'm using that term intent, uh, intentionally, um, the basis was that Sovia came out of. Um, and then you can see just how much improvement fine-tuned models are. And this is now a new base model, and I don't even want to know how great fine-tuned models are going to be. So this is not the same prompt I heard earlier with that uh, lady being summoned. And while this is way more atmospheric, I didn't quite like how, I don't know, grainy it is. Is that the right term? It looks like the, the, the movie grain that you get, right? So this is why I didn't use this one in the end. And also the, the tests I did on some other stuff that I was considering doing, like showing how to make an orc and so on. But it actually worked out of the box, so I didn't need to show it specially. Um, the orcs didn't look as good in this one. What if you put haze and film grain in the negative prompt for this one? We can totally do that. And I mean, I need to remove fog then as well, because... The fog will kind of give you that. So that's a very good use for negative prompt. Now, while this is loading, uh, I do have here the default model, the, the, the OG, the old model. Yeah, I mean, it did help a little bit. But if I look at those pillars, they look like PlayStation 1 low poly pillars. <laughs> yeah. Combine them and then use image to images, a really good way. Now, once this final image is done, we're going to go to one the, uh, to the, oh, I, I'm still at 1024. This is not going to work. Uh, I mean, I almost need to go down to 768 by 768. So we are now going back to the OG model that A2 Sovia is based on. Can I still delete this out? Maybe I can. So let's see what happens here. Oops, sorry. What GPU model are you running, by the way? Just 3080 Ti. Speed. All right. This is actually surprisingly cool. <laughs> I mean, I think this is a pretty poor result, but at the same time, I do like this art style a lot because it's so, it's very far away. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, since I've done 1024 times 1024, and I do not have the high res fix on, so what the high res fix does is it first generates at a smaller resolution, and then upscales it, and then generates at a larger resolution. I get these weird artifacts where there are multiple people and multiple. I I like to call them cluster of origin or nuclei. This is actually surprisingly good. I'm impressed by these. I mean. The humans do not look like humans at all, but honestly, these have a very cool style. <laughs> but yeah, but if we now do orc in front of a fire, I just want to break it. <laughs> Let's see. I hope this one at least gives me bad results. Otherwise, everything I wanted to show today didn't work. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Remember that other org earlier? This is how the orgs look here. Yeah. As long as you don't look at the faces. I mean, this is kind of all right, I guess. But but just as a reminder, uh, this was where we went, where we started, and this is where we. I wouldn't say ended because technically there's still development being done, but where we are currently at within like a year, I would say it's considerably less than a year because people didn't start until the beginning of this year, but still, uh, let's say a year from this to this. I feel like there's a pretty big difference. Also, I mistyped in the prompt. I just found out. In front fire instead of in front of fire or something. But I still would say, like, um, the points where you definitely see it is the hands. So if you look at those hands, they have the right numbers of digits for the most part. And, I mean, sometimes they have one additional one, but you barely notice it. While here, I mean, barely looks like a hand. Like, what is going on here? So, yeah. Good. Um, and with that, I think I've shown you, like, the, the most important bit. Um, yeah. I should probably show you how to upscale. Right. Uh, let's say you have an image that you like a lot. Uh, you can go to Image Editor and choose an image. Let's just pick that orc that we just had and choose an upscaler. Now, the ultra sharp works best for realistic images, but it does kind of work on art images too. The real SR GAN anime is, for, in my opinion, really, really good for art as well. Sometimes this one is better. We're going to try both and see which one gives us a better result. And then here you have your multiplier to make it how, by how much you want to make it larger. So we're just going to double the size. Woo. What's going on? Why did it fail? <laughs> is it because I pressed too fast? Oh, I pressed too fast. Yep. So let's see. It's done. And... It's done. Okay, so upscale outputs. We have one org. And we have another org. And I mean, if we put them side by side, uh, there is a small difference. But in my opinion, it's barely perceptible. And then, yeah, that one was the anime one. And this was the original. So... It's a very easy way to get uh, upscaled images. Um, what I have also done, and I don't have the originals anymore, but I still want to show it because it's kind of cool. In a lot of these old books, there are images that are super duper tiny. Now, I don't know if any of you has played, um, what's it called? Warhammer Classic First Edition or something. And they are these 32 by 32 pixel images which are super tiny, and I upscaled them. And honestly, these are quite all right, I would say. Uh, didn't work so well on the buildings because they were just too tiny. But that's a really good way of getting an image larger. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. For this here, I might go for line art. I mean, why not try it? There you go. Let's pick one of those and throw them in there. I have no clue whether this will work because they have quite a lot of noise. So what the AI does not like is noise. And by noise, I mean stuff like these lines here. So we'll see what it does. Um, I can usually just tell if I do preview here. This could work. This could work all right. So I don't know. Uh, you're a noble Tespian. Why not? Now, what you can, of course, also do, you can save this image. 
uh, does it black and white because I didn't. So the strength, if you have it at 0 0.5, it basically keeps the same image that you have down here. So it didn't change at all. Yeah, I can stop this and then run again. Um, you can save this and then change it. Do I have this here? Yeah, so here I wanted a different face so and some other details. So I removed some of the details here and then let it generate. It's another way of generating interesting images. An illegal memory access has happened. Uh -huh. <laughs> there we go. We broke it again. Uh, I am using the beta because the beta is something that is really cool, which I will show you in one second. Um, there is the ability to train your own model. Now, training your own model is a little bit of a challenge because you need to prepare a large data set of varied images and then you just let it train. You also need a somewhat powerful PC to do that. And with the new model coming out, that SDXL, um, it probably, so the old models don't work with the new model. So you have to use it. Uh, you have to train again now. So I wouldn't recommend getting into this right now. I would wait until SDXL training has been well established and then do it. So maybe now, there you go, you can get a pretty nice image out of a pretty crappy image. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Laura training. So for LoRa training, you should collect 20 to 50 images, throw them in here, give the LoRa a good name, and I would keep the trigger word the same as the name to keep it simple. And as the model, you need to use the base model. Now, if you want to see how this looks, I've made a video as well where I show it. Um, it's linked in the, in the additional image, like the, the document that I posted. And then you can do something like this. So I'm going to clean everything up here and I'm not using control net so I don't forget it later. And I'm going to do an ara cogra, which is, I think, how I typed it. I might be wrong here with C and K. I might need to t turn this over. We'll just do both uh, to show that if I do an ara cogra, I get plants. Yeah, I think it thinks avocado maybe this is what i'm thinking because that's the closest i i've gotten so anyway i get plans now i'm i'm generating both because i don't know which way it was written i think it was actually with k first and c later yeah or i get weird animal creatures now i've taken i've noticed that was not a bird that was a weasel i think and a beak yeah, because it has fur. I mean, this is a bird. So we get some wild stuff. Now I've trained a, a LoRa on Aracocra images. And now if I do an Aracocra, I get the following, which probably is the wrong spelling and I have to swap over. <laughs> this is the reason why I said keep the names the same. If I had the same name, I would know now whether it's Aracocra written one way or the other. I get this. And if this doesn't look like an Aracocra, I don't know what does. Now, you still get spare claws occasionally, something I've noticed. But, I mean, you can just reroll. And you can even do something like this. Uh, a crop Aracocra. Or a parrot Aracocra. Or an eagle Aracocra. An ALC, I mean, this could also work as a Kenku, almost. You can actually, um, I didn't have a crow Aracocra in there, but it knows what a crow is, and it understands that Aracocra means bird person. So if I give it a crow Aracocra, it understands, oh, okay, I need to take the features from a crow and apply it to a human. This is now a parrot one. 
I've actually gotten more colorful uh, wings in the past, so I hope I get at least one where I get really colorful wings. Again, luck of the draw. Just give it a couple rounds and eventually you get one that is good. But this was a parrot one and then I have eagle as the last one to make all the Americans happy. Hmm. There we go. Let's do it. Sure. I'm, I'm sure of it. So there we got the Captain America star on the on the clothing. Uh, let's see. Pelican is coming up after the, that image. It's no more. There we go. And now we should get Pelican. I've also added guns. This is going to be interesting because I said swords it cannot do. Guns is even worse. Ah, uh, no. I mean, kind of. Kind of. I think this is too far away from my training data, probably. Ah, actually, this is not bad, yeah. It's not giving us guns, though. Let's do firing guns into the sky. And then maybe, I don't know. Yeah, no, that's fine. That looks more like a pigeon. It's interesting, like how it's not quite a pelican, but it's going in the right direction. It's so close and yet so far. Yeah. So obviously, as the training gets more and more developed, this is going to get more and more powerful because this means you are not reliant on the model knowing what kind of race you want to generate. And let's say you're not playing D&D, &D, where there are a million images. Let's say you're playing Pathfinder, where there's also a million images. Let me think. Um, maybe Call of Cthulhu. You collect all the different monsters of Call of Cthulhu and train it on that. Um, so you can do all of this, or you rely on other people doing it for, for you. So... I don't know what will happen here, but uh, a colorful or oh, children's book. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. Children's book. And then we do arachnophobia AI. Uh, or you just rely on other people doing it for you. Um, there is quite a large community of people who just crank out one Laura after the other. And Loras are so, this is not a book, uh, Loras are so flexible for the most part that with just a little bit of tweaking, you can actually get surprisingly good results. And I think actually here my strength is probably too strong. Oh, we get at least holding a children's book. So I'm going to go down with my strength and then we'll see whether this fixes it already. I should also go back down to 20. No need for 30 steps, just takes longer. Oh, wow, now we're just getting spiders. If something like this happens, you can weigh um, your prompts. So by adding brackets to it, you can make something stronger. And of course, we can also put animal as the negative prompt, because we don't want the spider animal as... If I put spider as my negative prompt, then I'm kind of fighting against the Rachnophobia AI. So that's why I'm putting animal. Now we're getting a spider reading a book. Fine. AI doesn't want to cooperate today. So disappointed. I mean, these are really cool. I, I don't know why, but I, I love I love all of these material, Lauras. They're so stupid. I don't know why they said, yeah, we need this. This is good. Um, let's go to style very quickly. Because I think I have one that could also always be useful. Um, it should be P, plants. Planar, planets, plantas, plastican, post apocalypse. Huh. 
I cannot find it right now. It doesn't matter. Basically, this gives you like these scientific drawings of things, which are, of course, also really cool if you want to, you know, your players come to a new region and then you can give them a handout saying you discover a new plant and then you give them a handout like this. And you will just need to remove the text and put it in manually. Cool. I think this is pretty much what I wanted to show you. I'm a little bit disappointed that it didn't work better. I should have probably just stuck to my general prompts that I always use, um, which is, by the way, what I'll be running here in the background. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, now is the time. Just have to be careful because some of them contain nudity. But I think I'm pretty pretty okay here. So yeah, these are some prompts that I've done in the past, which give me cool results. And usually when I get cool results, I write them down so I can recreate them later. And I would say these are pretty good. <laughs> Do these record seeds? Um, I mean, you can have the seed of any image. Yeah, sure. Um, it's in advanced settings. There you have your seed. Okay. So, yeah. And it is actually recommended that if you do comparisons, that you keep the seed the same. So, yeah. I think those are pretty pictures. Is there an easy way to find these models and LoRa's and maybe even with some example generations? So if you click on my link um, on page two, there are my recommended models. I'm actually keeping it rather limited. Uh, honestly, it's a little bit of a challenge to really find good models. Because there are a billion different kinds of models. I should keep this open and show you the pretty pictures. It's generating here. That one is a particular favorite of mine. Now, this works better if you have a selfie or something as your starting image, because it will turn whatever image you have into something of that style, and it's very pretty. OK, I don't know what's happening here. Um, yeah, so as I said, at the bottom here are my models. Um, the Loras are of these three people. I think they have the best Loras when it comes to style. So you can just scroll through and look at them. And they always have example images there as well. So you see kind of what you're getting. Now, he's always making a coffee machine. So you see how much it changes from coffee machine to coffee machine. So yeah, uh, that's that one. Then. Uh, Thomas Angela, I've kept in there because he does. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is Castlevania entries for monsters, which I actually found kind of cool. Of course, the text is garbage, but you can just replace it very quickly. And you then get your monster generated in that small box, which is kind of cool. Um, and uh, the concept connoisseur is then the one that has the items. So for all these different items, you can find here examples. Uh, you can, of course, also get styles like this. So if you prefer to have these kinds of styles, you can do it. And then, obviously, Civite itself is the is the location to look. But as I said, there are probably more models loaded uploaded every minute than you can get through by scrolling. So good luck. <laughs> All right. I mean, you can always uh, sort by most somewhere here. Um, view more. I don't know. You should be able to sort somewhere here by most downloaded, oh, which is a it good. Says newest. It says newest ah, right now. I'm blind. Yes. So uh, most downloaded is a good one. And then you can just scroll through these and find out what it is. I mean, as you see, people just really like this kind of stuff. Not that I'm opposed to that, but yeah, it's not, not mine. Um, but yeah. Is Palace Cat really that far up? Holy crap. I'm impressed. Kind of shocked. But yeah. Um, 
and then again, uh, I have a video on models as well. So if you want to see what settings I use, I mean, it's a pretty short video. It's only like 10 minutes or so. Uh, you can find it here. So I have like an entire playlist that goes from installation, where to find models, how the UI works, in and out painting, which work considerably better for this video than here. Uh, upscaling and image viewer, how to upscale your image, and then the LoRa training. Total runtime is 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 25, 50 minutes. With the longest part being just what each of these options does. And then the other one I was talking about earlier is the tutorial itself. Now this has a section here called prompting tutorials that explains pretty clearly how prompt order affects everything, what the prompt structure means and so on. And the nice thing is all of these have examples. So here I'm showing that the place where something is located in the prompt makes a difference. So I have here a woman with blue eyes wearing a red dress in front of a field of flowers. And as you see, it actually made a woman in a blue dress instead of a red dress. Because blue was the first term that was used. And if I do it the other way around, it actually works. A woman wearing a red dress with blue eyes actually gave us a woman wearing a red dress with blue eyes. So this is basically where I a little bit explain this. Uh, also weighting, how that works, how yeah, this leads to different results. And you can see here what happens. And then I have example prompts, which are actually also pretty neat, I think, where I've just collected a whole bunch of different art styles. And you can see what they do. So for example, futurism, it's always a woman wearing a sweater. And in futurism, you get this style, gothic art, you get this style, and so on and so on. It's a million different images. It's very useful, I think, to just scroll through and see, oh, this is the art style I'm going for today. We have art mediums. We have attributes, which I would definitely take a look at. So I've actually found out that prompting on crystals is often a more effective way to get the right colors than um, doing it on the color. So as you can see, stuff like Alexandrite and Amnethyst really change it a lot. Ember just changed it a little bit. So you can also get the degree, uh, the difference between Aventurine and Chrysophrase. So yeah, you get degrees of how much color you want, which I found really cool while I was doing the research. Um, then another thing that I can highly recommend is the artists, where I've just collected a whole bunch of artists. There are some examples here, and then you can click through to see the full list. And for my games, I usually stick with either Renaissance style, because I like that oil painter old kind of style, or Splash, which I just said, this is a very distinct style, and I don't know which category to put it in. And I can just click here and then scroll through a round 1,300 images. That was a lot of work, so please appreciate. But yeah, it's actually pretty cool because you kind of get an idea what they are good at and also and how strongly it affects your prompt. Um, in Splash, I only put the ones where I had a feeling this affects it strongly. So misks are the ones where I'm like, it has a tiny effect. Like it doesn't really feel like there's a lot changed when I have a woman wearing a sweater and the artist style. Like here, if we look, this is supposed how it looks like. So if I just do the artist, it looks like this. But if it in combination with the others, it feels a little bit weak. And that's why I put it in misk. Well, if we go back to these, I mean, this is how it's supposed to look like. And look what it did to all of these. It really buffed it up and gave it a lot more oomph. And here you can see these spikes coming out, and it also does it on the other ones. And the waterfall just completely changed. Uh, if only one of the images changes, that generally means that artist does a lot of that. So I intentionally picked a person, a location, a nature thingy, and a fruit basket. And you can just scroll through. 
think this is actually probably the most useful part for me for the tutorial. A part, of course, of figuring out what all, the, all of the settings do. Um, there are some prompt generators down here. I don't know if they're that useful anymore. Uh, basically, you go here and say you want alien priestess summoning summoning an evil god. And it will basically think about, OK, how would I change this text to get a better prompt out? And gives you some examples over here. It's supposed to take 7.2 seconds. Come on. And you can take this term, then throw it in here. And we'll see whether this is good or not. I mean, it's a nice close-up shot, I guess. Doesn't give me the evil vibe. No, oh, I'm still using an analyze negative. I guess I can take that off. Yeah. So I think it's more effective to do the prompt engineering. So really try <laughs> what is going on with her face really try to go from one step to the next step try to modify it and including attributes i feel like i'm getting better results that way than using some random kind of uh prompt generator here but it is an option and if you're new it can be helpful cool yeah so any questions anything um you're interested in as i said i actually pretty much collected everything you need to get started in here so just click through the links uh install art room generate away guess join the discord if you have questions uh, i'm usually pretty good at giving suggestions if people say hey i want to generate this and it's not working so um i i do tend to be able to help people there um, there was one person who wanted a really weird art style. And um, basically, it was very washed out. And he wanted a Darth Vader that is very washed out. And the end result that I got was this, which I feel like I've pretty much nailed what he wanted. I got some really cool side Vader images out. I don't know what his original was, though. Not sure if I can find it. Let's see later. I mean, okay. As image. Sorry, I'm using my second screen to search. Yeah, he was telling me he wants stuff like this. That was his like start. And this is about as close as I got. I mean, it's not perfect recreation, but it definitely gives similar vibes. Cool. Yeah. I would say then we are done if there are no more questions. I don't see anyone typing anything or shouting. So I guess I guess this must be it. Um, final words, click more often on run. Just generate more images. More often than not, the next image will be the one that you wanted. <laughs> the, the amount of times where I was like, oh, it's not working, and then I just press run one more time, and then I finally got the result I wanted is pretty big. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So I would say we finish up here. I'll stop the recording.